Hey guys, this week we are making some pretty cool parts for a World War II airplane. The past few months I've been volunteering at Maps Air Museum in Canton, Ohio, and they of course need some parts machined from time to time. The first thing we were able to help them out with were these little carburetor and oil cooler control quadrant ratchet pieces. We have one original here. These pieces are very hard to come by, and if you do happen to find them, they're usually in about this condition, so they needed some new ones made. The airplane these go on is a Volti BT-13 basic trainer. So most of the pilots in World War II would have trained on this plane or something like it. I realize this is an ideal part for a laser, but I wanted to make them like this, so that's what we're doing today. First up, making a quick aluminum fixture, facing with the Superfly at 2500 RPM and 8th hour per tooth, which works out to be 20 inches per minute. Now spotting, then drilling some number 36 holes that will be tapped for 632 screws, spotting at 150 feet per minute, feeding at 5 thou per rev, and drilling at max RPM of 7500, which works out to be around 200 feet per minute, and again feeding at 5 thousandths per rev. That is a number 36 uncoated high speed steel drill. Last thing we have to do on this is tap those holes, and for that I'm using the new mobile base I made for our flex arm. Okay, our stock for this is roughly 100,000 thick, mild steel. XY coordinate system will be the same, just touching off the top of the stock for Z. Clamped it to the fixture plate using vice stops. Worked out to be the perfect uh, little slimline clamps to do that while I drill the through holes that will bolt it down for the majority of the work. Spotting, then drilling number 15 holes at 90 surface feet and 3 thou per rep. Okay, these holes did not drill out cleanly at the bottom, so I'm going to need to pull this piece off, clean those up. So I'll just put a couple of quarter inch pens I can use for dowel pens to make sure it lines back up right when I put it back on the fixture and bolt it down. Okay, now starting on the actual parts. First up, drilling to make some clearance for where the teeth will be, spotting those holes at 150 surface feet and 5 thou per rev. Then drilling those out with a number 36 drill at 90 feet per minute and 3 thou per rev. Roughing out the profile of these using an 8 inch 4 flute stubby carbide end mill from Lakeshore Carbide. That is a ramping 2D contour slot running this at max RPM, 7,500, which works out to be 245 surface feet. Tooth out per tooth, which is ramping at 60 inches a minute. And my ramp step down is 10% of tool diameter, or 0 0.0125. Finishing, same speeds and feeds, max RPM, and tooth out per tooth. I ran this left one first as a test to make sure that my tool paths were good on my 1 16th end mill and engraving. Had to do some tweaking, so that worked out well. Running a Lakeshore Carbide 1 16th 4 flute uncoated end mill at max RPM 7500, 1 thou per tooth on the 3D adaptive cleanup, and then 5 tenths per tooth for the 2D contour finishing pass. 1 16th end mill broke on me, but I was pleased to see that it was actually just a cam error on my part rather than improper speeds and feeds. Because um, I love the way that was cutting, so I really wanted that to be a great recipe I came up with. I patterned these tool paths to save time on that adaptive and just save clicks with a selection, but it came back to bite me because it turns out early on, I uh, 
did some poor practice and didn't pattern these, didn't space these parts equally. There's off by just a little bit, caused a small crash, uh, easily broke that 16th inch tool. So I went back in and corrected my cam, run it again, see how that goes. And I had the end mill tap down to about a tenth of run out or less, just to keep the odds in my favor that way. and engraving with the Lakeshore Carbide 20 degree engraver with their N3 coating. Max RPM, one thou per tooth, and 12 thousandths on the larger text, seven thou on the rest. Last up, going over the parts with a Nanpower abrasive brush to help clean up any chips or burrs left from the engraving and break the outside edges a little bit. The metal we had on hand was a hair too thick for the original parts, so I threw them on our Formox surface grinder, took a little bit off the backside, and then decided to clean up the tops while I was at it and make them nice and pretty and ground looking. The finish on these parts will be parkerization, which is a dark gray matte electrochemical process, and the letters will be filled with white enamel for good visibility. The guys at the museum were thrilled with how these parts turned out, and they have a lot of other projects going on, so be on the lookout for future airplane and aerospace related widgets. That's all for this week. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.